Alright, this is game two of my Rayav Commander Draft, abridged version, for watchability's sake. Alright, so kind of kind of an awkward hand to start. Only two lands. I figure it's probably fun. I could I could take a mulligan here and just see if I get something better, but my hand, my cards are uh, all white mana, so I don't really need red right away, as long as I draw any land in the first like few turns. Um, and also it's multiplayer, so one, you have more time, because people will leave you alone if you're mana screwed in general in more casual formats like this, and also um, you get to draw on the first turn, no matter where you go. So I keep this. Alright, so turn two, I still don't draw a land, so that's a little concerning, but I do have a play for two mana, so I just run out my Ancestral Blade. Alright, turn three, again, miss my land drop, which is a little awkward, but I still don't have to discard yet. So just send for two to opponent A, because they haven't been hit yet. Make me feel like I'm doing something and contributing to the game. Alright, turn three, I still do not draw a land which means I'm going to have to discard this turn. Our opponent C board kind of explodes in the last turn, so that's a little intimidating. So I so I attack him, basically hoping for him to block with his uh, his elf that when it dies, uh, each opponent discards a card, makes my other opponents discard a card, and then then I wouldn't have to discard a card myself. But he doesn't, doesn't go for it. Turn 4, still don't draw a land, but I do draw a Marble Diamond which is going to give me something to play so I don't have to discard, and it's going to give me a mana next turn. And now everyone's board is a little little too big for me to be attacking, so I just sit at home. So it looks like the, the goodwill that I've garnered so far has run out, and opponent A is going to start attacking me, which is fair. They've left me alone for a few turns, and it's only with one creature, so it's not it's not too bad. Also, opponent, also opponent A decides to play a, a scaled behemoth, which is... Huge and untargetable, so that's kind of scary. Okay, opponent C is going to encore his goblin, that when it dies it gets a treasure token. Instead of playing it second main phase and sacrificing all three to the encore triggers and getting his, his Yuri bigger, he decides to just send him around the board for easy blocks. Did not draw a land, and, but I still I still have enough mana to start playing things, so just run out my Kinsbale Courier, pass the turn. Opponent B plays a Foundry Inspector and kills the second creature from opponent A there. Tunnel visioning him a little bit, although that, that creature definitely had to die. It says whenever an a land comes into play under an opponent's control, it gets bigger and that player loses a life, I believe. So that's definitely... Some, it gets out of hand quick with three opponents. Alright, opponent B plays Explosion of Riches, which draws them a card and your opponents can all choose to draw a card or not. And everyone that chooses to draw a card, a trigger goes on the stack, and then one of his opponents takes five damage at random for each trigger. So we all choose to draw, of course. I still don't draw a land, and then end up taking ten from this. So that tracks, basically, how this how this game has gone for me so far. Alright, on my turn, I just draw a ninth bridge patrol, and decide to, uh, to just run it out, just in case my other creatures are removed, then it can start to grow bigger. If I have to start throwing things in the way as like uh, as jump blockers, like for the, the scaled behemoth and the, the giant reach cascade creature opponent Aya has over there, or if Halana starts targeting my things, and I do have to discard again. And I'm going to discard my other Kinsbill courier, because I can replay it from the graveyard, or I can encore it from the graveyard. Alright, I finally draw my mountain. I think it's turn 8 by now, but, you know, better late than never, for sure. And then I just play a Captain's Call, just to give me more chump blockers, try and keep myself alive, grow my ninth Bridge Patrol as much as possible. Opponent B is going to play Finn Clade Fugitives, which is uh, just a giant elf that has Encore. And then they're going to use the Halana trigger to kill another one of opponent A's creatures. He goes for the Ivy Lane Denizen, which, which can get out of hand if they're playing a bunch of tokens and stuff like that, but I think there's... There's a chance maybe you should have went for the opposition agent there. Not that I have any tutors or whatever, but it's just kind of a threatening card. And he's kind of targeted opponent A a lot. Failed to draw a land, but I've got I've got both colors of my mana, so I can start start playing the game, which is nice. And the board boards are getting pretty clogged up here. So I'm gonna play Crimson Fleet Commodore and give myself the monarch and just just see what happens basically. I can block most things, although there's two sifter worms, which are giant creatures to trample, but I get to draw a card and I'm Happy to just give the monarch away to whoever wants it here. So opponent B plays Sandstone Oracle, which lets them draw the difference between their hand and someone else's hand in cards. I've got a full seven card hand still, so I get to draw them. I think four cards there, so good for them. So here opponent opponent C asks politely if they can have the monarch, and I, or as I said, happily happily oblige, as it's a target that I do not need. Draw my, draw a Marble Diamond and take the the monarch back. Me and opponent C are are becoming best friends. 
And because I damaged uh, one of... Then I get, get a trigger from Belby, which gives me basically a free two, two colorless mana to play my Marble Diamond. As well as I run out my Grafted War Gear here. And I suit it up on my Kinsbale Courier. So it can block some big creatures. Namely, I'm worried about the uh, the, on, the big elf encore thing that opponent B has going on. Since my little creatures can't block it. So opponent B plays a Foundry Inspector. Getting another Halana trigger. Which they are going to... They are going to target another of opponent A's creatures. He's not incredibly happy about that, <laughs> understandably. Although his, bo his board is still very scary. All right, as I said, I was worried about the the big elf coming across at me, which it does. So I'm just going to trade off with my my encore creature. I feel pretty good about that. All right, so opponent C vampiric tutors at end of turn, but then untaps and doesn't do anything and passes. So that's kind of suspicious. All right, I draw a second boarding party. And at this point, I figure I should start start making some waves around the board. Nobody took Monarch off me last turn, which is kind of interesting. But I'm just going to play Rayav and then suit up my uh, Commodore here, making it an 8-5 Trample, double strike. And I'm going to go after opponent B, because they have the highest life total. And also Holana is very scary, so I figure I should make an enemy out of them, I guess. Opponent A is going to Soul's Might on his Scaled Behemoth, making it just ridiculously huge, turning it into a 14 power creature. And then, since they still have 5 mana after that, they're going to Monstrous Onslaught for 14, which is, again, ridiculous. They tar clearly tried to target everybody pretty equally because they're salty about being targeted by opponent B's Holana, so, I mean, good for them, I guess. So they're able to take out 7 creatures here, including uh, my Rayav, uh, the Sandstone Oracle, and uh, just, just basically some inconsequential creatures from opponent C's side. I do think they kind of mis made a mistake not taking out Halana, since Halana had killed four of their creatures, which is, I guess, a choice. But that leaves the boards looking a lot more bare than they did before, which honestly is kind of a good thing, because everyone else's board was stressing me out. So we do get a discard trigger off of uh, one of the creatures killed on opponent C's side. At this point, I actually have enough lands that I can discard a land feel pretty okay about it. Alright, opponent B is going to play a, a five power creature, and, and this time use their Halana trigger to target me, target my 8-5. My, uh, which is fair, because I can just play Rayav and then make it a, a giant double striking trampler again next turn, so seems right. Also gets opponent A off their case a little bit. So opponent C wants the Monarch again, and again, I'm I'm fine with giving it to him. I figure it's good to, to create a little bit of goodwill. But then they don't, again, they don't do anything on their turn, which is kind of suspect. They've still got quite a few cards in hand. I draw another land. Don't really have a ton of options. So I figure I should I should take out that scaled behemoth and these sifter worms before they get completely out of hand. Even though both uh, opponents A and B have, have their commanders out, I'm gonna go for or slash the ranks. So I send all my creatures over at opponent C, who feels mildly betrayed since they have the worst board, but as I say in chat, it's only for a moment that they have the worst board. So some people get some triggers, opponent B gets a card, opponent C gets a token, and then I just play Hero's Blade and hope that they don't gang up on me while while I'm defenseless. I'm sure someone's going to take the Monarch from me, but but that's fine. Alright, so opponent A plays Kamal's Will, and since they still have their commander after the Slash the Ranks, it's going to get both modes. So all his creatures are going to be able to take out Halana, as well as all his lands are going to be able to get in. Get in as 1-1 indestructible vigilance creatures. So they, take the, so they take the Monarch from me with a land. Their commander goes at opponent B who just plays an, an Ambush Viper but can't block because of Menace. And the rest of the indestructible lands go at opponent C, just spreading, spreads the damage around again. Our opponent B plays Brine Brin, which lets him bounce a creature when it comes into play. He bounces opponent, opponent A's creature, and also lets him bounce things whenever he plays uh, a spell with converted mana cost 6 or more. So that thing's very powerful and pretty big. But he bounces the creature so that yeah, he can attack opponent A and try and take the monarch and opponent A can only block with his commander so not not great guarantees them the uh the monarch there so all right opponent C plays his commander as well as the the discarding elf or the elf that when it dies everyone discards a card and then victimizes sacrificing that elf to make everyone discard a card and bring a couple creatures back from the graveyard I discard uh, wheel of misfortune because at this point in the game I just don't think it's going to be beneficial for me I'm not going to be able to empty my hand quickly at all with two six drops and a five drop and opponent C takes the monarch okay so I draw land manage to get through the the turn relatively unscathed. Go for Rayav here, and then uh, cast Alharu just to protect it a little bit. 
Okay, so opponent A encores their Briarblade Adept, and when that creature attacks, it can give any creature minus one, minus one. So they have a couple options. They can they can either take out my Rayav and put me to 20 commander damage, they can take Yuri out and put uh, opponent C to 20 commander damage, or they can outright kill opponent B who's tapped out and all they have to do is take out their Perilous Mirror. And they do decide to take up opponent B, sort of getting their revenge for the, the tunnel vision they experienced earlier in the game. So hard to blame them for that. All right, so opponent B plays Thorn of the Black Rose, taking the Monarch without having to attack, which is good, because at this point, opponent A is very dangerous, and I think neither of us really want to anger them that much. And they just play play a couple a couple creatures and, and pass the turn. All right, so I draw another land. Um, I'm going to go for Boarding Party here and just see what I cascade into. I cascade into into. Bit Benevolent Blessing, which is going to give one of my creatures protection from any color I choose. And at this point, every creature my opponents control are black except for the elf tokens. So that seems like a pretty, pretty easy pick to me. I put it on Alharu. And then uh, thinking that I'm very clever here, I use Fiery Cannonade to destroy the elf tokens, leaving every single creature on the uh, board unable to block my creatures. And I've got a very large Alharu right now, who can who will be attacking with Double Strike because of Rayav. And Unfortunately, I, I make my intentions for who I'm attacking known before I start attacking, and opponent C smartly puts two extra damage on my Rayav before the cannonade uh, resolves, which means that the fi my fiery cannonade is going to kill my Rayav and basically negate my my lethal attack here. So that was a bit of a bit of a miscalculation. My hu my hubris got the better of me there, but I do attack opponent C anyways, because at this point I think I think they're by far the biggest threat. Opponent A has has one giant creature, but can block one creature. And they are gonna kill my spirit and then and then attack me for seven to take the monarch, I presume, and also to make make me just like an an easy target for for opponent C. So I. I try and take something down with me. And then opponent opponent A looks like they're they don't really have a ton a ton going on. So opponent C is probably gonna gonna be able to run away with this one. They just get some card draw and mana down and opponent opponent C just has a, a massive board. Yeah, opponent opponent A concedes, showing a bunch of lands in hand. So this this game was a little anticlimactic, I would say. I couldn't quite get my mana going for a while and then at the end there I kind of again missed something missed something on board when I, I probably could have taken out opponent A and then maybe had a, a fighting chance against opponent C so if I hadn't used the fiery cannonade there I could have taken out opponent A and then my opponent like if even if they'd taken out Rayav on on that turn I still would have been at a healthy enough life total that I might have been able to survive the attack and even if and then I could replay the Rayav and still have just a giant, like, double-striking uh, pro-black creature that probably would have been able to get in and win the next turn. Didn't work out that way. Anyways, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Also, follow me on Twitter. Uh, I'm Duke Silver or at FireLordAppa over there. Um, I post a link to, my, to the videos whenever I upload them. I try really hard to be funny to uh, make success. And again, thanks for watching, and I'll have Game 3 up hopefully shortly.